Hey crafters, this is Nilton from craftofprogramming.com. I'm a senior electronic trading Java developer based in New York City. So you want to learn about a Java synchronization. Great, you are in the right place. Make sure you watch this video till the end because at the end I'm going to show you a powerful and flexible way to uh, do Java synchronization. Okay, that does not involve the synchronized keyword. And by the way, if this is the first time you are watching um, these videos on the Java uh, thread series, make sure you uh, click on the description below where I have a link to the playlist. Let's get started. So before I actually show you code, uh, let, me, let me give you a bit of uh, very quickly theory. So every Java object is a monitor. Now, what is a monitor and what does that have to do with synchronization? So a monitor is a synchronization construct that has a lock and a wait set, okay? So when a thread invokes a synchronized instance method, say, in Java, then the thread attempts to acquire the lock on that instance, right? And if the lock is available, obviously the thread acquires the lock. Otherwise, the thread is placed on that monitor's wait set. Okay? Now, notice that this data structure is a set. It's not a queue. This is because there are no guarantees, right? Giving a set of waiting threads in this waiting set, right? On which waiting thread will acquire the lock when the lock is released by another thread. So, in particular, there are no ordering of arrival, say, in a FIFA order that the queue would provide, right? So, it's totally unspecified which thread on this waiting set will acquire the lock when the lock is released, okay? So, a lock in Java has two functions. First, and the most obvious one, atomicity. Now, atomicity is all about guaranteeing that multiple instructions or statements or expressions are executed all at once, okay? They cannot be interleaved by different threads. So atomicity is all about mutual exclusivity uh, uh, access to you know, a method or a block of code. The second function of Java synchronization that perhaps is not so well known is memory visibility. The Java memory model right, guarantees that, for example, if you have two threads um, you know, that are using the same lock, so the same lock is important here, to access mutable shared data, say, for example, a field of a class, then when the first thread releases the lock, right, then it is guaranteed that all the changes made by the first thread prior to acquiring the lock, or while this thread was holding the lock, right, all those changes are guaranteed to be visible to the second thread, right, after the second thread acquires the same lock, right, and after it releases it, okay? So this memory visibility property of Java synchronization and locks is referred to as happens before relationship between these two threads, okay? Now, locking in Java, it's all about you, through experience, identifying critical sections of code, okay? Now, a critical section is a method or a block of code that changes shared mutable data. Java supports two types of, uh, you know, sort of synchronizations. One is using the built-in or intrinsic uh, locks, which are provided by the language, which is what we're going to cover today using the synchronized keyword, using the monitor, as I've described. But Java also provides standard library, you know, re-entrant locks, okay? It's a library construct. Uh, in this video, like I said, we're just going to cover the synchronized keyword and, and where it is applied and so on. So the synchronized keyword can be applied uh, in a synchronized method. You can mark a method as synchronized or you can use a synchronized statement. We'll cover that shortly. Synchronized methods are very convenient to use. When the thread enters that synchronized method, the lock is automatically acquired. And when the method returns, either normally or via an exception, the lock is automatically released. First, I'd like to get started by telling you where can you, quote unquote, tag a method as a synchronized. So 
the first thing you need to know is that you cannot tag a constructor as a synchronized method right this is not allowed so you got a compilation error here now why it's not allowed because think about it only one thread actually constructs an object so it doesn't really make sense to synchronize the constructor so let's get rid of this now another place where you cannot another method type where you cannot apply the synchronized keyword is on an abstract method right if i have an here an abstract method foo then the same thing applies it's not allowed why synchronized synchronization is all about an implementation uh, detail you are grabbing a monitor's lock and an abstract method doesn't have an implementation doesn't have an object associated with it so this does not make sense also interfaces right so let's try to insert here an interface I cannot apply the synchronized keyword is on interface method so let's illustrate here so I have here my interface full let's just add here a method uh, void f okay so I cannot apply this method cannot be synchronized same thing interface is all about abstraction not nothing concrete and if the method is static let me just change this static same problem I cannot apply and even if the method is default I also cannot apply good so you know you cannot apply synchronized on constructors on abstract methods or any inside any interface method okay so now that we cover where we cannot apply the synchronized keyword let's come up with examples so let's say my main class here as a counter field uh, which is an instance of the class and there is also a um, static int field okay static counter cool so i have those two fields here and what i want to do is i want to guard access to the changes to the, those two fields which are going to be accessed by multiple threads with a lock right so let's come up here with a synchronized method which i'm going to call the void method ia just for by the way the way you uh, by convention apply the synchronized keyword is after the access modifier so you have the access modifier and then synchronized and then the return type okay and then obviously the method name it's perfectly possible for you to change the order of this but by convention like i said you place the access modifier the synchronized keyword the return type and the method name okay and also just just to be clear i usually don't write method with single letters this is just for the sake of this example and my notation here i is an instance method and s will be a static method and then i'm just going to use letters a b c d blah 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 for the method all right so what do i want to do here so these inst instance methods that are synchronized will basically change the counter in a way that they need to be guarded by a lock and then I'll have a bunch of static uh, methods which are, will acquire a different lock. We'll talk about that. Then we'll make changes to the static field. Okay. So what I want to show you here is access to a shared field. So all of these methods will mutate the instance field or the static field and as such and they will be accessed by multiple threads so they will have to access to those fields will have to be synchronized right and this is what we're showing here so ia is an instance method so it's going to mutate the counter the instance counter field so it needs to be guarded okay and will be called by multiple threads so let's add here a new line a new line and then you know just by convention let's put the method name here and then the thread that is you know executing this and then the value of the counter field okay so thread current thread dot get name and the value of and let's increment the counter okay but this is a compound operation right it's a bit misleading looks like one single uh, statement but it is it is three so you have the thread needs to read the value for the current value of counter right then it needs to add one to it and write it back. So it's actually three operations. It's a compound operation that if accessed by multiple threads needs to be guarded by a lock. That's why it's inside the synchronized method, okay? So that's basically what the thread does. And then the thread is just going to sleep for some time. Let's obviously add the sleep method here. And let's just sleep for, I don't know, um, five seconds. Okay, and let's obviously wrap this inside a try-catch block. And that's good enough for me. So that's kind of what the thread does. The thing that I'd like to do 
is I would like the thread to uh, print you know some information about where it is and also uh, that it acquired the lock so acquired the uh, instance lock okay and obviously I need to print here the thread uh, name all right okay so and then towards the end after the thread is done the thread I was just gonna say that the thread is releasing the instance lock okay so that's kind of the pattern we're going to follow right so the thread first if it's inside already the synchronized method or statement it has acquired the lock and it does its thing it increments the field in a thread safe manner it sleeps and then towards the end it's going to release okay so now I just say instance lock because it's just going to be working with two locks one an instance lock to protect access to the instance field and a static lock to protect ac access to the counter field okay so that's my instance method and now what I want to do is I want to create static method which again following on our scheme here I'm gonna put an S and let's just change this to S okay and uh, this is going to be the class lock and obviously this guy is going to go to the S counter and the class lock so first distinction here is you can see I am synchronizing an instance method versus static method right so synchronizing an instance method synchronizes on these objects the main objects so the instance of the main class object lock whereas a static method is going to synchronize on main's class object right this object here main class that's where I'm going to be synchronizing all right so now let's create our two threads so first I need an instance of main here uh, let's just call it full the name doesn't really matter and let's create our two threads uh, what I want the threads to do is left first me okay let me just give it a name this guy is gonna be thread one so what I wanted to do is I wanted to um, first print that this thread is actually seeking the lock is seeking the instance lock okay thread dot current thread dot get name and then uh, it's going to call the method using my instance here and then at the end I'm just gonna print saying that the thread it has released has released the instance lock so this is the pattern we're going to be using for threads that invoke instance methods and then there's going to be a similar pattern for threads that invoke stat the static um, methods locking on the static monitor so let's create here our um, get a handle of our thread here and then let's do the same thing for the static for the thread that access the static context so change the name to t2 <coughs> and here let's call the static method it's actually main sa okay and obviously we are um, locking on the class lock uh, class all right so let's start these two guys start and let's uh, join them um, so main joins because I want main to wait until these two threads die okay so very basic stuff let's execute this so notice that the thread 2 got scheduled first even though we got um, you know I called a t1 start first it doesn't matter so it's seeking the lock and then uh, t1 is also seeking the instance lock and notice that the thread a thread 2 has acquired the class lock and then did this thing incremented the counter and then it released it and then it was done and the same thing for thread one was seeking the lock then it, it acquired the lock and then it incremented the counter and then you know exit the method and then has released the lock okay so this was being done completely in parallel because the two threads were locking on different locks now you ask me what if they actually were trying to go on the same lock then obviously one of the threads would block so for example if I just do this thing here let's just copy this and call it t2 okay and now I run 
then obviously the first thread acquires the lock, right? And the other one is blocked because the lock is being held by the other thread, right? Notice that when the thread one releases the lock, then thread two then acquires it, right? Increments the counter and then releases it and it's all happy. Okay, so let's move on here. The synchronous keyword can be applied to a statement. It doesn't have to be just synchronized method, okay? So it's perfectly equivalent to rewrite this as, as follows. So let's call it this B and let's just wrap this code here on a synchronize, okay? And I'll synchronize on this. So if you do this, this is actually completely equivalent to the other example, synchronize on the um, synchronize on the method, right? But then you ask me, why on earth would you do that, right? It seems inconvenient, it's redundant. Well, it is true, it is redundant, but there is an application for this. Suppose that there are two reasons why you would want to use a synchronized statement. This is when you want to have more fine grain locking. Remember, locking adds uh, performance costs, right? If you lock all, mark all your methods to synchronize, then there's going to be thread contention, uh, which degrades performance, right? Yes, the thread will be safe. You will save the, you'll solve the safety problem, but then you will have an issue with scalability and performance. Let's say for the sake of the example here, that there are other things here that uh, the thread is doing, right? For example, you know, it's doing other things that that don't require synchronization, right? Maybe is you know changing other fields that are don't don't need to be synchronized, um, and so on and so forth, right? So you can have a bunch of statements here before the critical section, right? And then you acquire the lock by using the synchronized statement, right? You do your, your, your thing and then you just release it. And then at the end, right, you can then do other things, okay? So that's one reason, fine grain locking. The other reason is, suppose that here I want to call another a method, like an, a, you know, I'm going to call a method on an object foo.bar, right? you know it's just the logic of this instance method b requires me to call a method if the method is market synchronized then the risk of calling foo.bar is that it's dangerous that the thread is while holding a lock is calling an external method why because that method may have another lock that may increase the chances of a deadlock right also foo.bar may be you know doing a long you know I/O call, right? And you don't know. Now, what is the problem of calling an I/O? What is the problem of calling a method that uh, does an I a lengthy I/O call when you have a lock? Again, uh, all the threads that are waiting are going to have to be waiting until that I/O call method returns. Remember, calling an I/O call does not release the lock. And by the way, calls in calls that are made when the thread doesn't have a lock are called open calls. Okay. So this would be called an open call. And that's kind of thing you, you need to, you should strive to do that. But that's why synchronized statements are useful, okay? Okay, that's for synchronized. So obviously the same uh, story applies to the static context, right? So this method here, which let's call static B, so it has to be a lower case. Here, same thing, right? I can just uh, wrap all of this code on a static context, right? So I'm gonna get main.class and it's exactly the same thing, right? Marking a static synchronized method or right at the beginning of the method using a synchronized end on main.class is exactly the same thing. Again, why would you do that? To reduce the scope uh, of the locking, a more fine grain, just like that, right? That in this case, you may be doing other things before and then uh, you wanna do a call right here that um, should not use synchronization, right? Same story. 